Hey, Joe Gianelli here. So this is a video about increasing your launch percentage. Uh, Justin Donald requested this from me. I'm uh, helping uh, uh, coach uh, his divisions. So I want to post a video though for a bunch of people to be uh, um, to be able to impact a lot of people. So the idea of uh, increasing launch ratio, and I'll be uh, attaching a document to the group as well. So you're going to want to call up the document and scope out the video at the same time. I'll explain some of the bullet points a little more in depth. You know, is the whole point of this. But uh, okay, so here's the idea. You know, I'm big on rep retention. Well, in order to retain, or not in order to retain, you know, to have, yeah, well, to have people to retain, you got to launch them to begin with. So there, in a way, there's a retention within training as well. And so the objective really is to launch a hundred percent of the people that are in front of us and believe that to be possible even though it usually doesn't end up being the case, but you want to begin with, with that in mind. So here's a document. Let's dive right in. Uh, intention, once again, is to make sure that you as a sales trainer have a high launch ratio, whatever that looks like for you. To me, I was always driving it towards 80%. I didn't always have an 80% launch ratio, but to me, and you'll see in a second, uh, it was I treated it the same way I, was, I would treat selling Cutco as a rep. So I'd want my reps to have an 80% closing ratio. I'd want to have an 80% launch ratio. So whether I'm persuading somebody to buy Cutco or persuading them to sell cutlery as a job, persuasion's persuasion. To me, it's the same psychology. So with that said, let's dive in here. So I, it says create launch instead of avoiding dropout. And uh, there's a difference between avoiding a negative and creating a positive. And what I mean by that is if we say, hey, listen, if you're talking to your DVM or somebody, and you're like, you know what, I'm really concerned about dropout, so what do I do to minimize dropout? The fact that I even say those words means I'm expecting dropout. You, know, you can't be worried or concerned about something without having knowledge of it to begin with or without, ha without expecting or believing that that's likely to happen. It's not what I want, but I do believe that that's likely to happen. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the concern or the worry to begin with. So the judges are saying, hey, listen, I'm really worried about dropout, how I minimize it, versus, hey, you know, I'm going to get these guys and gals to launch. You know, how do I make sure I uh, launch them? So creating a launch is different than avoiding a dropout. So that's step number one. Pay attention to your own thoughts and your beliefs and what your expectations are. And take a look at uh, if you run training to avoid dropout or if you've been or if you run training to create a launch or to retain reps. There's a huge difference. Uh, I likened it to, uh, you know, what if versus how can I questions from reps. So you teach that to reps, we'll teach it to yourself. So if rep goes, you know, what if this goes wrong? That means they're saying I'm expecting or I believe that this is going to go wrong. What if it does? Versus... How can I succeed versus I'm expecting success. How do I get it though? So again, you know, what if something goes wrong versus how can I succeed will also demonstrate, you know, whether somebody expects success or whether they're positive or negative uh, or their view of the future is positive or negative. And so, you know, the idea is that what we believe as human beings, we will cause to come true so that we get to be right about our beliefs. In some way, shape, or form, it allows for us to feel like we have control or knowledge of how the world works. So let's make sure that our beliefs are consistent with what we want. If not, let's change the belief. You've heard this before. I'll say it to you again. So expect launch percentage to go up. Expect you know reps to be retained. Have that be the expectation. Know why that makes sense. So 20%, 20%, 60% rule. You've heard this in advanced training. By the way, I teach this to my reps in regular training, um, and my launch ratio for a bunch of years now has been 75% or higher. So to me, why my launch ratio is higher is because I don't mind teaching reps to succeed. That way, they have faith that it will work, and I'll reference that in a bit. So it's funny. It's like putting off – some managers are, again, worried about dropout. They put off training, and putting off the advanced training material is probably what's causing the – drop out to begin with and they're like see division manager I knew it I suck at training or see I knew it people don't launch self-fulfilling prophecy so don't be afraid to bring stuff back anyway 20% never launch 20% always launch 60% are on the fence again sounds familiar to you 
Uh, we don't worry about the 20% that will never. We don't worry about the 20% will always, because they're either going to always or never, regardless of the quality of our training seminar. So you can run the worst training seminar in the world, two out of 10 people will launch. You can run the best training seminar in the world, two out of 10 will not launch. Who cares? 60% are on the fence. How do we persuade a fence sitter rep to launch? Well, confidence, enthusiasm. I'll go through each one of these at a time. Uh, well, I'll review them first, then go through them. How well we answer the question in advance, relationship and trust we have with reps, multiple attempts, it takes three, four, five attempts to persuade somebody the job works. You know, that's usually the case. Got to be willing to do that. One thing I didn't put here is that in order to even have somebody be swayed on your side of the fence, step one, you have to put them on top of the fence to begin with. So, you know, that means them open-minded to the job working. Just like you'd expect them to have a customer be open-minded, you need to have them be open-minded. So you'd have to have them wait till they go through training before they decide whether it's going to work or not. Or if they are going to make a decision, you'd want them to decide it will work in advance. So open-minded, same thing. Johnny Rep, be open-minded, which means wait to make a decision, get trained, and then determine how well you'll do. Get trained before you decide whether it's a good fit for you or not. Quite often, we decide something fits or something doesn't fit, but we don't even know what the heck that thing is. We haven't even been trained on it at all. So open-mindedness would also be something you want to plug in there prior to even having even swaying the fence that are on your side of the fence. So going through the, each of these individually. Confidence, meaning you as a trainer, how confident are you in their ability to succeed? They can tell how you view them, either unconsciously or, or consciously. If you are keeping your fingers crossed and you suspect that they're going to suck, they can sense that. They're more likely to drop out as a result of that. On the contrary, if you believe in them and you're able to go through all the reasons why you know these people will succeed in your own mind, whether you even say it or not, but I recommend you tell them why you believe in them. What better way to instill that confidence than to tell them? But even if you don't, they can tell about your opinion. They can tell about your own expectation. So, you know, if you want them to expect to succeed, you have to expect that they will succeed. Not hope with fingers crossed, but actually expect that they will succeed and they will do well with Cuckoo Cutlery and it's, you expect it's in their best interest to do well with our programs. Confidence, support, enthusiasm, that's your energy level. You know, are you, you know, tired at the end of training? Not because you're a high anxiety or stressed out type of tired, but tired because you gave yourself, that of an athlete, that of a performer, a Broadway star. That's what I mean by giving passion, you know, motivation, inspiration that you're transferring to people. Got to be enthusiastic. How well we answer questions in advance. Critical. Start to look at a question uh, as a, or rather a concern as a unanswered question. And then what you'll do is you'll convert the concern into an unanswered question and then you'll get those questions answered for your reps. Ideally though, you empower them to do this. I'm saying it's something you do, no. You teach them to do it. And I teach reps that I go, listen, you're responsible. Essentially I tell them you're responsible for launching yourself. I'll teach you everything, but you got to be responsible for what you think about training Johnny Rep, responsible for your level of confidence, responsible for how well you role play, responsible for your opinions of things, responsible for all the actions you take, responsible for whether you follow the training manual or not. Therefore, you are responsible for launching yourself effectively and launching yourself into sales. So communicate that idea of responsibility to your reps and teach them, like, hey guys, if you have a concern, you will not succeed. You probably won't even finish training. So you need to be mature enough and responsible enough to convert that concern into an unanswered question and get the question answered by myself or one of the AMs. Because once those questions are answered, you will decide this job works and you will want to do it. You will be motivated and eager and excited. So answer those questions. It allows for rep to expect success. I cover that in pre-training, your opening comments. Uh, I'll cover that in a bit. Multiple attempts, three, five attempts. So usually throughout training, sometimes there's like three to five different conversations with some reps to make sure that they're powerful. Uh, and it's not like I twist their arm to do the job. If they truly have made up their mind to be a no and they go into the closed-minded zone, I'll just say, okay, fine, nice meeting, yeah, I'll put closure. But if they're on the fence and they're going back into the insecure zone, I will make another attempt at selling them on knowing why the job works or selling them on doing the job. I make multiple attempts. It's like objections, like I totally understand where you're coming from. However, here's the thing. 
tell the truth, and then close again. Objection cycle to persuade reps to do the job, no different than objection cycle to persuade a customer to buy Cutco. Best time to handle objection concern before it comes up. You teach them this in the demo. Well, make sure you're doing it in training. So you look at the different objections, and I listed a bunch of them here, or concerns, and ask yourself, where in training do we answer these questions? Each part of training has an intention. There's a reason you have it in there. There are a series of conversations. Each one is there for a reason. Know what it's accomplishing. And what it's accomplishing is answering some sort of question a rep has, so that way they can confidently buy the job just like a customer buys the product. And I'm using it as an analogy and a parallel here so you truly get it. So pre-training, opening comments. Um, I have my reps watch videos before they even come to training. I do orientation calls with them and say, hey, listen, is there anything you could see getting in your way of doing well? And that way, you know, nothing's off limits. We open that, you know, open lines of communication before they even come to training. So that's something to consider uh, as well for you and your AMs to do. Talk to reps in advance. Uh, opening comments, big part answering questions. So anyway, here's the unanswered questions from this document. How are we able to sell regardless of economy? See, the concern there is I'm concerned I'm not going to sell because of economy, or I'm concerned people can't afford it. So the unanswered question, we're going to keep it all positive here. We're going to keep the unanswered question form. How are we able to sell regardless of economy? Get that answer. Now I tell them, I go, listen, guys, I'm going to, I list all these on the board in opening comments. And they say, we're going to spend the next three days answering these thoroughly. But for now, we're going to spend a couple of minutes on each one. That way, we can dive into training, which is the action, but with you expecting success. Because if you expect to do poorly, it doesn't matter how much we train you, you're going to do poorly. So I go, let's touch upon these now. Put your mind at ease a little bit. But if you don't get them all answered thoroughly, it's fine. That's why we design the next three, of, three days of training and ongoing training to get these questions thoroughly answered for you so you can be confident. How does one succeed in making phone calls? So again, the concern is, I'm concerned I suck at the phone. So again, I'll keep it in unanswered question form. Get that answer. How and why do we get referrals? That way they believe and know that they have a future with our company. How do I manage my time and schedule? That way they don't get stressed out and give up because they don't think they can time manage or they think it's gonna take away from their school. How do I succeed without a car or than any other certain resource? That way they have a view of it's still possible regardless of my condition or circumstance. Use stories. How do I feel? How do I deal with flack from family and or fear of being judged? So if you answer that question, they are now insulated to getting flack from family because you taught them how to deal with it. So they're not going to drop out because of mom and dad complaining. Why and how is selling cuckoo safe? That way, again, they're comfortable with that. That's important for them to communicate that to the parents. I teach my reps to answer these questions for their parents as well. And I say, hey, provide a service for your parents, your mom and dad. Um, and because they, they, they just care about you. That's why they're giving you a hard time. If you truly want to get the value of selling Cutco, you need to demonstrate to them that the job works and you're able to do it and it makes sense to do it. So practice answering people's questions or concerns because you have to do that with customers anyway practice it by taking care of your own parents don't make it an argument or a butting of the head perceive it as they love me and care about me but i want to provide a service because i don't want my mom to be uncomfortable i don't want my mom to be concerned i want her to be confident and comfortable with what i'm doing so let me provide a service by getting her questions but say questions answered hey mom sounds like you have a question why don't we get that answered because i'd like for you to support me and you teach that, hey, mom, again, let's get your question answered because I'd love for you to support me. It sounds like you're concerned. It means you care. I get it. But let's get that answer. Teach your reps to communicate this. Uh, how do I feel comfortable instead of feeling awkward during the demo? How do I sell Cutco to people I know and feel good about it? That way they're eager to call people they know. What attire is appropriate while presenting the product? It could be little things like that, like what to wear that throws a rep off sometimes. How and when do I get paid? Make sure people know how to get paid. You know, right? Talk about one of the quickest ways for somebody to drop out. They don't understand how they're paid or they think that they're not going to get paid and et cetera. <laughs> Excuse me. Five beliefs reps need to have in order to launch. I put them in quotations because their thoughts or quotes that reps have in their mind. It's almost like the quote and then the rep's name, like on a cool quote slide. And so the five beliefs that they have to have, they have to believe, a little redundant, 
Uh, and your job to make sure they believe in these is this job works. I can do it. I want people to own Cutco. People will buy. And it, this opportunity is valuable to me. It's valuable to me to sell Cutco. So if they have those five beliefs. And you know we like to be right about those beliefs. They're going to train hard. They're going to work hard. They're going to be excited. They're going to devote energy to the program because because they'll be like, job works. I can do it. I want people to own Cutco. People will buy and it's valuable for me to do this. Therefore, it makes sense for me to take action consistent and uh, turn those beliefs into a reality. Motivation comes from it's possible. It's worth it. Just another way of looking at the belief system there. So your job during the three days of training in order to launch them, because motivation means inspiring somebody to take action, essentially. You need to have a motive to act. Motive to act. Motivation. And so the idea is that they need to believe it's possible and they need to believe it's worth it to them to do the job and keep taking action. That's leaving the office with a sample kit, going to their first demonstration, making their first phone call. Because to be an active rep, they need to make at least one call, get at least one appointment, get a sample kit, show up with a blue binder and cut rope and leather. That's an active sales representative. They need to believe that that's possible for that, what I just described works, and they need to know that it's worth it to them. If either of these don't exist, they'll drop out. So now you take a look Day one and day two retention, and then you could you could add more bullet points here. I was just brainstorming recently, but you want to take a look at how do I retain reps and create retention day one to day two. Well, make sure all these concerns are answered in opening comments and throughout training, the ones that we listed, the unanswered questions. Make sure they role play a whole heck of a lot, so that way you know they know exactly that the how to use the manual. They know why it works, and they just believe that, that again the job works. So role playing allows for all those beliefs that we know are critical to exist. Day two to day three, comfortable with product, more importantly, comfortable and confident with the price. Price conviction, you got to make sure they know what it is and they know why it's important to have it. And you just tell them, hey, listen, if you don't believe in the price, you will not feel comfortable selling it. Cutco is an amazing product line, it's forever guaranteed. Let's make sure that each of you knows why it costs more and that you like it to cost more so that way you never take advantage of a customer. So you make sure they understand that. Comfortable with phone approach and calling people they know. That's how you retain them from day two to day three, so they go out and make calls. Having enough people to call is obviously shaped by the opinion they have of the people on their list. So it's your job to shape their opinions of the different actions it takes to do the job. The action of calling people that they know is an action. Their opinion needs to be, that's cool, I get to rekindle a relationship, I want them to see Cucka, we're going to have fun. The opinion can't be, that's awkward, I'm using people, this is weird, they don't like me. <clears throat> day three, PDI, well, day three, retain them to you know, PDI and AT1. Communicate that real training begins after their first demo is completed. So I tell them, listen, we're just going to get you on the field with enough comfort to at least cut rope and leather for one person. That's when the training begins. It's a great way to launch them. That way they don't think they have to be perfect. Uh, they know that they're not in it by themselves. They're in it with partnership with you. Number two, make sure they get their first sale and they're progressing towards that first promotion. That's how you retain somebody. Uh, step one, they need to believe and expect they're going to get a sale in order to even leave training with a sample kit. Number two, make sure they get a sale so you retain them long term. Number three, get them to that first promotion right away. Last but not least, you're in partnership with them. So regardless of what happens on first demo or second demo, you will teach them to adjust the scope on their rifle so that each time they shoot, they will get closer to hitting bullseye consistently. That's how you also, again, retain them, again, knowing that they're not by themselves. You're going to work with them to get them better. So it doesn't matter what the hell result they get. You'll still believe in them. You'll still turn it around. You'll still increase it. And even if they go nuts and sell like a ton of cuckoo, you're still going to help them in, improve because you're in it together. It takes the pressure off them, and instead it puts the responsibility on both of you guys, which makes them feel amazing about it. So put these things into action. That's how you'll be responsible for launch ratio. Make sure that you're persuading the fence sitters. Make sure you're answering their questions in advance. Make sure that they have the right belief and they believe success. And then make sure you're just retaining them one event to the next.